increasing number of folks who have decided to not vaccinate against measles, and this is the end result of that. Uh, we have over 600 cases of measles thus far um, this past year in the United States, which is far above what we have come to expect. Uh, this is a disease that we pretty much got rid of in this country back more than 10 years ago, and now it's um, making a resurgence. It is a serious illness uh, being complicated um, in some instances by pneumonia or other respiratory tract diseases, but what we really fear are some of the central nervous system uh, complications of this. It can cause an encephalitis, uh, in younger children when they get sick. Unfortunately, it used to be a pretty common cause of mental retardation and deafness. One of the scary things about this disease is that it is extremely contagious. This is one of the most contagious diseases that we know of. And so if you're sharing the airspace with somebody, uh, and you're at risk, there's a pretty good chance that you'll actually contract this disease. So if there are people who were at those facilities uh, during that time period, it would behoove them to really look at their vaccination history, make sure that they're fully protected. Vaccination is now recommended for children at about the age of 12 to 15 months and then again as they get ready to go to school at about age four to six years. If you haven't had that second vaccine and you're older, it's another indication to get that second dose. Now this is a live virus vaccine and so there are some people that we don't want to vaccinate. Uh, it's not recommended uh, for vaccination if you're pregnant or if you're very immunosuppressed. For a little bit older individuals, it's likely that they contracted measles when they were children. So if they were born back in the 1950s, uh, they're probably okay. Um, if you're younger than that, then you should have had received two vaccines. Now, we didn't start doing a second vaccine until a little bit later on. So if you're unsure of, of your vaccine history, check. Uh, see if you've had that second vaccine. If not, you can get a second booster dose. Or there are ways to check your blood to see if you do have protective immunity. That would be another way to establish whether you need to be vaccinated or not. Typically, the incubation period lasts for about a week to 10 days. You contract this generally, or it, it, it announces itself with the onset of fever. Uh, scratchy throat, uh, irritated eyes, uh, then you break out in a generalized rash. This rash usually starts on the face or the head and then kind of spreads centrally. Red, blotchy sort of rash. The fevers can be quite high, 104, 105 degrees are not unusual. And then over the next four days, the illness starts to subside. So people are typically sick for about a week period or so. And we think that uh, people are contagious in those few days before they get sick and then in several days after they break out in the rash. So there's a long period of time, oftentimes four or five, six days, where they can be contagious and be spreading this disease uh, very readily to other people. The Autism Link has been completely debunked. Anybody who looks at this in a rational way uh, will clearly recognize that the measles vaccine has nothing to do with autism. And I, I really wish we could expunge that, but unfortunately there continues to be this subcurrent of you know, vaccines being linked to, to some of these other diseases. That one in particular, there's just no you know, basis in reality that the measles vaccine is linked to autism. But despite that, you continue to have that pushback of, you know, we shouldn't be vaccinating for these diseases that have largely been eradicated. Unfortunately, the viruses continue to exist in nature. They continue to find their way back into this country. And if we don't keep the level of vaccine very, very high, we're gonna see these outbreaks and we're gonna see more and more cases.